you know, United States uh, goes to war with, the, 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 you know, the Nazis, and we are getting the symbols from the same, borrowing the symbols from the same secret society, which is the Bavarian secret society in Germany. And that makes you wonder, what's going on? Like, who is... Um, why would we be adapting... Putting us up. Why would we be adapting this symbology? Exactly. Exactly. That is a great question. Because um, I believe what happened, actually... Uh, you, you, Derek, uh, go ahead, uh, you know, because well, I don't want to talk. They, I, you know, I, I think the, you know, some of the theories behind some of the, you know, stuff is the, you know, Greeks and the Romans, you know, the first yep. democracies, you know, were, you know, supposedly started there, minus per, one in Persepolis. Uh, okay. But uh, they, uh, so a lot of those, you know, buildings and shapes, you know, were attractive, but, you know, symbology, you know, probably, you know, before there was languages, you know, people communicated Absolutely. in symbols, you know, Absolutely. Or, and also, Absolutely. you know, they, so they've transcended over the decades, you know, but, you know, there's, they're constantly everywhere. We're bombarded by symbology and, you know, for them, I think it, it's a, it's a power thing. Yep. You know, they, they get energy off us not knowing what it, you know, what the, the symbol means, you know, like, but, you know, we're constantly, you know, you know, the, the coke, you Absolutely. know, it's, it's fun to have a little secret uh, that we keep from the, the uh, hoi polloi. The, the, the mass, yeah. And uh, believe it or not, if you read, uh, if you read uh, Carl Gustav Jung's books uh, on symbology and also Freud and also Nietzsche, uh, you would realize that uh, symbols are very important. Symbols are the language of dreams. That's why, um, you know, when the, somebody wants to interpret the, uh, your dream, actually he is a symbologist. And uh, what is the dream? The dream doesn't come from your conscious uh, part of the brain. It comes from the subconscious of, uh, part of your brain. And so symbols basically deals with your subconscious. And they're very ancient. How the ancient they are, if you go back to the caves in Spain, in Europe, and the, you know, in Middle East, I, you name it, in China, I don't know, you would see common symbols. Even these people, these human beings, were totally separated. They used the same symbols for explaining things. That means that goes back to the idea of the collective Unconscious. Yes. Unconscious. Unconscious. Yeah, unconsciousness. And then, uh, so unconsciously, we are following some sort of... Um, pattern. Pattern, yeah, exactly. Unconsciously. Not consciously, unconsciously. So even I say, hey, you know, I'm against the globalism and I'm against this and that. But unconsciously, I my my unconscious and subconscious would respond to it would respond you know uh, to the sign to mcdonald's or you name it you know anything that you see everything is symbolic uh i don't know if the second clip is ready or not uh sam um but uh right out of the star and you have just the inside you have what is called a pentagon that's why the United I, States has a Pentagon. Yeah. The Pentagon is a symbol. Uh, that's why, incidentally, Chrysler can use the Pentagon symbol as a Chrysler symbol because they're the ones that produced all of the uh, half tracks and tanks and everything else for the United States during the Second World War for the Pentagon. So they still use the symbol of the Pentagon. But what's interesting is that this is an upside down with the point pointing down, the two pointing up, and this is a symbol, of course, as I said, representing the devil. And you see a lot of these killers and rapists and murderers, uh, you know, with the five-pointed pentagram. Uh, here it is again, just showing you how it's, it has its connotation with the pointing down, being the devil. Here's the first synagogue in Los Angeles of the Benai Brit in 1873, and up here, what do you see, is the inverted pentagram. We're talking about this is the first synagogue in Los Angeles, and they're using an inverted pentagram, which everyone uh, knows is associated from the earliest ages in the Middle Ages with devil worship, okay? 
Um, here's a seven rayed kingdom of God, how the seven flames and the seven candles of light. Incidentally, the seven candle lamps stand in the synagogue. The seven candles represent the seven lights of the heavens, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, the sun, and the moon, the seven ancient gods of the ancient world. So when you see the seven candle, that's a very holy seven candle lamp. Stand. No, it just represents the seven little lights in the heavens. And each one of those, uh, each one of those lights represented a god. Each one of, the, one of those gods represented a day. So therefore, we have seven days of the week to honor the seven candle lampstand of the seven ancient gods of the world. Uh, it's all very metaphysical. It's all very strange, and it's all very well put together. If you understand how it works. Uh, here's the uh, the shell oil. Uh, to give you an idea, well, let me back it up. I moved too quick on that. Um, Here's the Panorama Mall has an emblem, a symbol, and I put the shell symbol next to it so you can see what we're talking about here in shell is the sun rising between two triangles. The sun rising between, that's a sunrise, it's not a shell. Just like the Toyota, you see the sun rising. And I wrote a letter to um, the Shell Oil Corpor Corporation and I sent them pictures like this, and I had some extensive research material I sent with them. I said, is this true? Is this, is this not, in fact, a shell, but it is a sunrise, which is a symbol of a secret society in Europe, and it is used in, uh, in this way? And they said, yes. They wrote back and said, yes, it is a secret society symbol. It's been used for the last hundred years. Um, Prince Bernard of the Netherlands except, uh, was a member of this secret society. And so when you drive by a shell, just remember, it's not a shell, it's a sunrise of a secret society, and I'll get into that, what it means later. And it's just to show you how emblems and symbols all around us, and we don't even know what they mean. Um, here's another one. Um, the the eight-pointed star is two squares superimposed on each other. Get it better. This is square here, and then the square here, and it's called the double square of Freemasonry. <clears throat> the reason for the double square, the first square means that you play fair and square. You know, when you play baseball, you play baseball down to town square. And if you, uh, anything which is legitimate and, and, and right according to the secret societies is square. You play fair and square. And if you go to jail, they'll give you three square meals. It's fair. It's, it's, it's the right thing to do, right? And so the whole idea of square means that everything which is right and legal and just and everything's squared. So that's why even in court they say, well, your testimony doesn't square with the, with the facts. It square means things which are right and correct. When you superimpose another square, the, impl the implications of the second square, which you will see, means disorder. It's the in intertwining of both order and disorder, meaning that you have the power over what is right and correct, and you also have the power over disorder and things which are not right and which are not correct. And so the same people control both chaos and order. Incidentally, uh, that's why you have, um, well, I better not get into that because that's going to come up in a minute. Uh, here it is again, the double square Freemasonry. Um, the chevron. Chevron oil is actually the double square Freemasonry. See, this is two squares. Now, oh, wait a minute. This is two squares. What this chevron is, and that's the word chevron. Uh, you'll see on the military, the police wear them on their, on their arms, and the uh, military wears the uh, insignias of power. They're called chevrons because they are squares. It's a box. That's a box, and this is a box, and this box is sitting on top of that box. And if you draw a line, you know, for a triangle back here, you'll see it's two square boxes sitting on top of each other. It's referred to as the double square or the chevron of Freemasonry, the double square of Freemasonry, okay? And so it implies that the powers that be in this world have both control over revolution, trouble, anarchy, and they have control over good government and over righteous government. So they can do whatever they want. You want to have a good government or a bad government? They can do the same. They can do whatever they want because they got the money and they got the power. <clears throat> Here in England, of course, it's more appropriate in England, is the double square of Freemasonry in, in London at the uh, Parliament. It even says the octagonal central library in London has the square, the double square of Freemasonry. And, of course, it, I think it's appropriate there because they do, in fact, finance and organize and direct all over the world all kinds.